Movies, they're everywhere. With multiple new releases coming out every single day, there's just no way anybody has the time or money to see all of them. Which is too bad, because it means that a lot of really good films go completely under the radar. Heck, you may not have even heard of some of the best films of the year. Don't worry though, because we've got your back. Here's a look at some of the brilliant movies of 2017 you totally missed. Revenge Ask anyone who's ever been pregnant, and they'll tell you that the whole creating another human with your own body thing isn't easy. Back pain, swollen feet, and a roller coaster of emotions are enough to make even the most calm people go a little crazy. But in Prevenge, that pregnancy induced madness quickly turns to murder. Writer director Alice Lowe plays Ruth, a pregnant woman grappling with the death of her partner. As her due date nears, Ruth begins listening to the menacing supernatural thoughts of her unborn child and starts to believe the world should be held accountable for ultimately leaving her baby without a father. Cue a revenge-fueled killing spree that leads Ruth to reevaluate each piece of her wildly fragmented life. Just so that you know, you have absolutely no control over your mind or your body anymore. <gasps> this one does. Oh, and that's no prosthetic belly there. Lo was actually in her third trimester when she filmed Revenge. Talk about method acting. Chuck once upon a time, there was a regular guy named Chuck Weppner, who sold liquor and did some prize fighting on the side for cash to support his family. Then, one day in 1975, he was cherry-picked from a sea of boxers to go glove to glove with one of the world's greatest athletes, boxing legend Muhammad Ali. As most film fans know, Weppner's amazing story famously inspired the classic film Rocky. How can I help you, Mr. Weppner? A fellow boxing? Rocky? Tell Sly John, Chuck's here. I can handle this. But unlike the fictionalized Rocky, Chuck aims to tell the true tale of this unlikely sports hero, with Lee F. Schreiber in the lead and a great cast including Naomi Watts backing him up. The Lost City of Zed Charlie Hunnam, Robert Patterson, Sienna Miller, and the new Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland, teamed up for The Lost City of Zed a thought-provoking adventure tale about a group of explorers searching the Amazon for a legendary lost civilization. I call it Zed! The ultimate piece of the human puzzle! Unfortunately, The Lost City of Zed opened the same weekend as The Fate of the Furious, so pretty much nobody had any idea it existed, and it vanished from the box office almost instantly. The good news? That gives you the opportunity to unearth a cinematic lost treasure of your own. The Transfiguration this one is definitely not your average vampire thriller. The Transfiguration shifts its focus away from classic vampire tales to the story of a young teen named Milo who shields himself from the unfriendly outside world with a deep-rooted fascination with the undead. But that interest turns lethally obsessive when he becomes friends with the troubled Sophie, leading to a chilling slice of afterlife indie horror flick that will leave you completely transfixed. You changed a lot after the first person you killed. And you change a lot more after after one after another. The Devil's Candy Ethan Embry stars in a sinfully delicious horror film about a tortured artist who blacks out and wakes to discover he has painted a horrifying portrait of pure evil. Has he been touched by some kind of holy or unholy force? Or is he simply going mad? The only way to find out is to watch The Devil's Candy for yourself. If you dare! T2 Train Spotting. To anyone who said sequels rarely stack up, we counter with T2 Train Spotting, the 21 years later follow up to Danny Boyle's classic Train Spotting. Two decades on, T2 peeks in on the life of the gang from the original, with Begbie, Renton, Spud, and Sick Boy each in an unexpected, or all too expected, place in their lives. Can people really change? Or is that just an illusion we sell ourselves? Boyle's inventive sequel asks the question, but you may not like the answers. Where did it all go wrong? <laughs> Where did it all go wrong? Where did it all go wrong? Where did it all go wrong? I don't feel at home in this world anymore. This Netflix exclusive release stars Elijah Wood and Melanie Linsky as a pair of eccentric neighbors who embark on a quest to track down the thieves who burgled her home. Their mission quickly melts into chaos and violence as they frantically try to outwit the pack of corrupt criminals following their every move. I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore bursts forward with an inventive, subversive, slyly smart, and a downright fun feel that will have you hollering in one scene and pondering society's structure in the next. All right, tough guy. You had your chance. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Are you okay? Dig Two Graves 
The brainchild of screenwriters Hunter Adams and Jeremy Phillips, the indie horror outing Dig Two Graves centers around 14-year-old Jacqueline Mather, referred to by her more masculine nickname, Jake. Grieving for her recently deceased brother, Jake is thrown for a loop when she's visited by three strange men who say they can bring him back to life. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, so... I'm Wyeth. Now that we know each other, we're no longer strangers. Are they telling the truth? What lengths will Jake have to go to see her brother again? And what does her grandfather, Sheriff Waterhouse, have to do with it? As Jake begins to contemplate an unthinkable trade-off, dark secrets of her family's once-hidden history rises to the surface. Inspired by gothic motifs of grief and revenge, and soaked with the uncertainty of an ambiguous timeline, Dig Two Graves should captivate discerning drama enthusiasts. And though it didn't make any big waves at the box office, given its tiny release, Dig Two Graves has been showered with acclaim from critics, with Roger Ebert.com calling it an uncommonly smart, well-made, and ultimately touching meditation on grief. Colossal You'd expect a film with a title like Colossal to be an overhyped summer tentpole, but this pitch-black sci-fi indie comedy came and went without getting the media attention it deserved. Colossal stars Oscar-winning actress Anne Hathaway as Gloria, a woman in the throes of a post-breakup existential limbo who's shocked to realize she actually has bigger problems than just curbing her drinking and getting back on the dating scene. Like giant reptilian kaiju-sized problems in the form of an enormous monster terrorizing South Korea. These two things don't sound like they could possibly be part of the same movie, but the way Colossal connects them is just part of the film's genius. It's a joke. Really dancing, so, uh... Can you guess which film this is from, huh? What is going on? <laughs> Do you want to make any requests? This is, this is not last that long. A distinctly unique take on the monster movie genre, boasting ultra-fresh performances from Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, Colossal is decidedly strange in the very best way. From the soul street fight reminiscent of Rock'em Sock'em Robots to the ultimate narrative twist, here's a film weird and wild enough to stretch your definition of what a creature feature should be. Raw this foreign horror flick is just as formidable in English as it is in French. Raw, which was called Grave in its original European release, starts off so simply it may even elicit laughter. A movie all about a vegetarian adjusting to college life amongst meat-eating peers? Not exactly captivating. But writer-director Julia Ducournau practically slaps you across the face with a rack of raw ribs in the moments that follow. Happy-go-lucky freshman and lifelong plant eater Justine has high hopes for veterinary school and intends to be laser-focused on her studies. However, her mind soon shifts to a different, unexpected target – human flesh. The taste she acquires after she's forced to eat raw meat during a hazing ritual. As Justine tries to make sense of her newfound cannibalistic desires, Raw swerves down the winning road of navigating college parties, a petite professors, and the complexities of sexual identity. We won't spoil the ending, but we have a feeling that Raw's third act is what catapulted it into the laps of many adoring critics, and made a few viewers fall out of their seats. Bloody and brutal, but oh so bright. Raw is a film you can really sink your teeth into. Literally. Land of Mine After making big waves at the Toronto International Film Festival and in Danish theatres in 2015, Land of Mine finally hit theatres in America at the beginning of 2017. Not that anyone seemed to notice. That's a shame considering how gripping Land of Mine is. Based on a true story, the film is set in Denmark at the end of 1945. Freed from German occupation, the country was still filled with thousands of hidden landmines. Sergeant Cole Rasmussen and his band of German prisoners of war are tasked with clearing the explosives, a job that brings into question justice, morality, and vengeance in a single breath. In Fahnchen und dem Feldweg liegen 45000 Minen. Hier this historical drama earned itself a 2017 Oscar nomination for Best Foreign Language Film, a standing ovation at TIFF, and the title of Best Danish Film of 2015. If Land of Mine is missing from your watch list, change that immediately, if not sooner. The Salesman A twisty and intriguing drama from Iran, The Salesman tells the story of Imad and Rana, a theatre-loving couple who set out to stage a production of Arthur Miller's classic play, Death of a Salesman. After Rana is attacked, however, their lives are upended as the need for revenge begins to take centre stage in their lives. Well, 
Lauded as an ingenious cinematic use of the American stage, The Salesman's Story Within a Story brings to light questions about violence against women, marriage, post-traumatic stress, death, and the class system, and asks the audience to work through them as the film runs on. Though The Salesman might have slipped past you, it certainly wasn't lost with critics, landing itself the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film at the 89th Academy Awards. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.